Hello, everyone. Welcome to the I Don't Get It podcast. I'm freaking out again. We have Ryland <laughs> Adams in the studio. <laughs> and um, I talk about Shane Dawson all the time, obviously, because there's a huge series. And everyone who follows Shane follows Ryland and his sister Morgan. And I can't believe he's here today. So, <laughs> so here we go. Ryland <laughs> Adams is a YouTuber for you guys that don't know. He has 3 million subscribers on YouTube, right? That's insane. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> and Shane, would you say Shane's like one of the biggest people on YouTube, your boyfriend? I mean, he's been on the internet definitely for like, am I not close enough to the mic? For no. forever. And I do think that recently he really has reinvented him in, mm-hmm. a, in a way that has kind of put him at the forefront of the internet. Yeah. Like his docuseries is like all people talk about, I feel like, these days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just, just right off the bat, how annoying is it that people yeah. are like, Oh, you're Ryland, Shane's boyfriend. Right. Like, it, how annoying is it that to be constantly compared? It's annoying because I'm um, always actually sister, yeah. you know, so uh, you're like, you know. Well, see, I actually, I don't mind much at all because in a way, like, he is the one that taught me the internet, showed me the way of the internet, and kind of introduced his audience to me. So I'm actually very thankful. So when people associate right. me with Shane, I'm like, oh my gosh, yes. Right. Um, so I'm actually like, I don't get upset about it at all. No. Oh, that's good. That's Did you nice. want to be a YouTuber before you met Shane? Not necessarily. No. I mean, I was working at Clever, which are you guys still both working yeah, at Clever? So <laughs> Ashley and I worked at Clever and Rylan left right when I got there. And Clever is obviously like an entertainment news YouTube channel and we cover like YouTube news too. I haven't been there for six months, but I'm going back on Thursday. Wow. Yeah. They, they like do this weird thing with me. They like take me off the schedule for literally like six months and then they put me on like for maybe two months before bachelor season and then I can't do it again. Oh wow! No, no, that's um, interesting. But so yeah, so we met Ryland kind of through Clever, but like I, I don't really. Well, know you, you actually produced a show about The Bachelor that you were also on. Oh, and oh, you yeah, were a show. I was like that the show. side that's piece right. on that show. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. really were. You were like off to the side. I like uh, to be honest. I know, like you guys were part of, or you were part of The Bachelor. I was never. I've never been like a part of The Bachelor Nation, or mm-hmm, I'm mm-hmm. not sure their terminology for it. Yeah. Uh, but Jocelyn was just like, "I'm just going to put you on this show," and I was like, "Well, I'm not like a like avid viewer." And she was like, "It's fine. Just like read the social media." And I was like, "All right." Yeah, you just read you didn't watch right uh i try i mean for the like first few episodes i really tried but the bachelor is a commitment i mean i understand that i like understand the appeal but to actually follow the entire season is a huge time commitment it's so long it's It's two hours maybe four hours a week paradise is like four to six hours hours paradise is a job I think <laughs> ideally really I would want to watch it like in two spurts, two bingers, like the first That'd half and then the second half, but I can't yeah. do that. But we all cool just want to binge everything audience. now, which is why YouTube's so amazing. Right. Um, okay, so you moved to LA when? Oh my gosh, a long time ago now, when I was 19 and I'm 27. Okay, so. and so then you always, like back to what Lauren was asking, did you always want to be a YouTuber? You started at Clever. Well, I actually, so I moved to California in the, like in a summer of college. So I was like still in college. I was like, I'm going to go there for the entire summer. And if I, like enough happens for me that I'm like making money, I'm just going to stay. Okay. Um, so you were I was drop out of college. Yeah. Okay. Um, which I just ended up doing because I got a commercial agent. I booked like a few commercials that paid me enough to be like, I can mm-hmm. stay here. What commercials did you do? Oh, like some crazy ones like LACMA, which is like the art. Art museum. Wait, oh, you did okay. a black yeah. commercial? That's so cool. And then like so a cool. state farm and like the background. It was like a weird part in like a Wendy's. But these were all like eight years ago now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was just kind of taking whatever I could get. I was like putting myself in acting classes. And then I realized I was a bad actor. And I was like, well, what I, I can't do. <laughs> the cringe or the old videos yeah. of you acting. It's so funny. So I was just like, well, I feel like talking is more of like a route I can take. And I do like entertainment. That's why I moved here. So then I really like pushed myself into hosting. I feel like hosting is always that backup. I'm like, well, I can't. I, I love attention. This is me. I love attention. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Um, but I don't have a talent, so it's like I can't sing. I can't dance. I can't act. I'm so I guess, and I, can... <laughs> I guess I'll talk about people who sing, dance, and act. You guys are such assholes. Mm. No, you it's know, not that's, not true. that's not. I've never wanted to be an actress ever. I love interviewing people, and that's why I wanted to host. Well, I saw really? the video of you interviewing yes, Noah Cyrus. No interest. 
And that was so funny because she didn't give a shit what you were saying. No. And I mean, also, uh, yeah, I also was just like throwing myself in without really knowing anything about hosting. And then I did get yeah. into every hosting class in LA, but uh, yeah, it's weird. But okay. I didn't think I was going to be a YouTuber. Now. So then how did you meet Shane and then how did YouTube just come about? Well, Shane was actually, he, so like Clever also has a division that's like more personality based, which is Clever Style. And so he was actually collabing with them. So like Lily and Jocelyn collabed with Shane and he was in the office where I was working. So we had like crossed paths a few times and we had a few mutual friends. And then we actually like, after we had ran into each other, like two or three times, like connected on Bumble and then started talking there and then started dating. And now I guess it's three years later. So and true. how was that? Because what Shane was dating a girl before he was dating you, right? And then did he come out in 2015 um, as bisexual? I'm not exactly sure the year, but he had been with Lisa for a very long time. But then I like he had experimented and like dated around with guys before he officially like found me. I mean, Garrett, who is actually also a big part of his life and our videos and everything, right. uh, they actually started off like dating and then mm-hmm. it like really didn't work just in terms of dating. They're great friends. Mm-hmm. Um, and then me. Lisa so. was actually the host on the. How random After is this? Show. So Lisa was a host on another show I produced for Bachelor called Will You Accept This Ride? Yeah. The no, Warner no, Brothers. Yeah, right. that's, Shane's, that's ex-girlfriend. Shane's ex-girlfriend. No Lisa way. Schwartz. Oh, like Isn't so many years. God, yeah. the world is mm-hmm. so what a, small. small world. How old is Shane? Uh, 29. Okay. He's three years older. Or 30. No, he just turned 30 because I'm 27, so he's 30. So I heard that you one time said that you don't believe in bisexuality. Uh, okay, so yeah, this was like a big like issue with Shane and I too because he is like by at the beginning we, it was like a conversation. It wasn't an issue because I did like go on record being like I just don't know if I buy the bisexuality. Well, thing. we're well, not like, we're like not accusing you of anything. We could, we have discussed the exact same thing here on the podcast before. We're like. So is it for real or not? Yeah, so, we had Jonathan Vanessa on here yeah. too, and he was saying, like, he was explaining it so clearly how you should believe in bisexual, yeah. and he kind of yeah. changed my mind on the entire thing. I, bl- I 100% And I think it. it was more, like, just not being aware. Like, I had never known somebody that had identified as bisexual. Mm-hmm. So in my mind, because I'm a gay man and in my process of coming out, I was like, well, I think the defining question is, do you envision yourself marrying a guy or a girl? Like, yes, you can date. Yeah. Yeah. both right now but like in my mind as like me being tunnel vision thinking about myself i was like down the line i'm like well yeah i could date a girl i could sleep with a girl but like i envision my life with a man so okay, that therefore totally totally makes sense. i thought that like that was probably how everyone thought but yeah. i guess i mean i don't guess i know that right i mean you can be equally as attracted to a guy as you are a girl mm-hmm. and like it could go either way depending on who you fall in love with. Exactly. So does Shane believe that, has he always pictured himself at the end of the aisle with a man or a woman or does he never known? I don't think he ever like ever really thought about it, which was like so opposite for Mm -hmm. me. I think it was like for him, it was like he had an inkling that he did want to like do something with a man. Mm -hmm. And then he did like that. Obviously we're in a relationship. So he's in a relation, a gay relationship right now, Mm -hmm. even though he identifies as bi, but I don't think like, God forbid we ever broke up. I don't think it's like out of the picture that like Mm -hmm. he could potentially look for a Mm -hmm. girl. It's whatever he Mm -hmm. like feels in the moment. Yeah. Interesting. But back to like, obviously, so you guys met on Bumble. And then was it like right away, like instant attraction? Like, yes, we're doing this. Because I feel like in my dating experience, I live in like this gray area, Ryland, which is the worst where it's like, what are we? But for some reason, I feel like the gay community just goes way faster. Or yeah. the bisexual. And I think there's, so I was always in a place, he's like my first real like long-term relationship. I mm-hmm. had like a few that were like three months, six months, but I mean, that's long in LA, but not in mm-hmm. like the term of like whatever. Not in Colorado where yeah. you're from. Yeah. I mean, most people are married by my age in Colorado, exactly. but I think, what was the initial question? Was it love of her sight? Yeah. Like, did, did you guys just hit it off right off the bat? Were you like, yeah. So okay. I was thinking like, I finally was at a place in my life where I like was like, 
I had a job that I like felt secure and that I like made money. I, Cause I was like, so like on the go, 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 go before that. And then I was finally ready to be in a relationship. He was in a place that was ready to be in a relationship. So I don't think it was like this gamey thing that I think a lot of people play in LA. Like we clicked, we started dating and then it very quickly was like, Oh, this is a person that I could be very serious with. And then escalated from there. Mm-hmm. But I mean, from the get go, like I would, when we were even like just talking on Bumble, I'd be like at clever covering award shows, like dying laughing at my desk because, he was so funny like even via text messages <laughs> right um so it happened pretty fast oh i love that so cute so your sister morgan lived with you she moved out the well, chain mind the chain mind that she lived with you for a while she, no he was the reason she moved in with us like even before i really knew that she was coming out to live <laughs> in la um they had kind of set that up themselves oh, that's so cute and then the second of course i like kick her out right now we're living Living with her at the moment in the apartment we kicked her out of. <laughs> That's so funny. No way. <laughs> All right, guys, we interrupt our amazing podcast with Rylan to tell you guys about an amazing sponsor called Robinhood. So I'm sure you guys have heard of it, but if you haven't, Robinhood is an investing app that lets you buy and sell stocks, options, and cryptos all commission free. And basically, they strive to make financial services work for everyone, not just like really rich people. And it's amazing because it's officially your like door into adulting. Like we should all be diversifying our portfolio. You know, it's like really scary get- to take money out of your bank account <laughs> and to put it into investment. But with Robinhood, you're going to actually understand what you're doing, which makes it a lot less scary. It also makes it less scary because other brokerages charge up to $10 for every trade, but Robinhood doesn't charge commission fees trade stocks and keep all of your profits guys. and it's also easy to understand they have charts and market data and a place to trade in just four taps on your smartphone so learn by doing you go on your app you learn how to invest as you build your portfolio discover new stocks and trade favorite companies with personalized news feed and you cost you have customized notifications for price movements so you never miss when it's the right time to invest and my favorite part of the platform is that it lets you view stock collections so in other words they have categories like 100 most popular they have entertainment social media and curated categories like female ceos and analyst ratings of like buy hold sell for every stock so right now, Robinhood is giving our listeners a free stock like Apple, Ford, or Sprint, big, fancy companies to help build your portfolio. So sign up now at getit, G-E-T-I-T dot Robinhood dot com. That's G-E-T-I-T dot Robinhood dot com. And uh, yeah, I think you guys are going to enjoy. Let us know what you, what you think about it on the uh, message boards. Let's go back to Ryland. So Rylan got some backlash for, quote, kicking his sister out of the apartment. And I t- totally get this because Ashley will mess around with me just for, like, you know, Instagram funnies, you know? Right. But he kicked her out and everyone was like, why would you kick your sister but out? Seriously, She's so p- nice. But people took it seriously. Yes. They, like, really got mad at you for that. You're like, excuse me, this is a family decision. There was, of course, a lot of conversation around it. But, of course, it. we're making it funny. Yeah. Yeah. And in real life, I understand now from an outside perspective. I, like, live as myself. So I was like, oh, nobody's going to see right. it that way way but like yeah yeah, the first time because we all did get so comfortable i love living with my sister my sister living here has actually been like such a game changer for me just because it's worked out so well but there was a time where it's like okay like it's not exactly ideal though to like always live with us because she's still 21 like she needs to make a life for herself yeah it's easy to be like oh i'll just like stay here because everyone's here which like isn't a problem but she also that's what you did (laughs) i need need ashley to like push me in the right direction just like she pushes jared in the right direction i better start pushing you a little harder then (laughs) i've literally said that to ashley a million times i'm like why do you push jared so hard and you don't push your own sister as hard as you push jared he and i are life future partners it's a different thing. Like Lauren you came has, out of the same vagina. She needs to go and you know create her own life. Like Jared and I are building a life together. I don't know. That maybe if sense. I lived on my own, I would push myself because I would have to push myself. Oh yeah, so you, you guys are going to have your own version of this. Exactly. That's why I'm so curious about <laughs> yeah. how the dynamics are between Shane and her. Because like Jared and I are best friends, but are Morgan and they are too. Yeah. I, they had like a weird bond in the first place. He was the reason same that with them. she started YouTube to begin with mm-hmm. as well. Like that wasn't anything on my. Like I don't mind that she does YouTube. I actually love that she does YouTube because now i have another person to like vlog with and stuff because that's like a weird thing you're like totally it's it's not just normal for me to like my friends that aren't on camera be like okay i'm gonna just throw a camera (laughs) in your face right um but i think 
we had obviously, I mean, I guess not obviously, but we had the conversation off camera before we had it on camera. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yes, this is real life, but we're also like amping it up a little bit. Like we're, we're producing reality. So like, yes, it's a real story. It's really what's going on in our lives, but like nobody's being emotionally affected Mm -hmm. by what's being filmed. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think people just didn't see it that way. And it's kind of like the same thing about um, the Jake Paul thing. Like you don't want to, let people down by letting you know like the pranks are fake but like right. also continue to keep watching our pranks mm-hmm. right yeah mm-hmm. um so you meet shane and how did, did you just wake up one day or he was like maybe you should try like what was the day where you were like i'm gonna do youtube and then how did it start from there like how did you find your brand and like what your voice was gonna be i think it was more so because of clever and i like i'm not beefing with clever at the moment but what had happened was I was I signed on to like an exclusive contract with them because they offered me a price point that like just didn't make sense to turn down at the time. And so I was in this exclusive contract, but they were like pigeonholing me in a place where like I wasn't getting the opportunities that the other girls were at Clever. And I would pitch shows and shows and shows and I would have meetings with them and be like, listen, I need like you, I'm like, I've given everything to you guys. You need to give something back to me. Like I was so burnt out on just doing like the day to day there and I was no longer creatively satisfied. And when I realized that they weren't ever going to take me, like help me go anywhere further than where I was, I was like, well, then I'm just going to do it like for myself on my own like channel. And it wasn't even like a crazy business move at the time for me. It was like, I'm so like creatively unstimulated at Clever. So I was like, I just need to like do something that's like fun and creative for me. And then it kind of quickly like took on, which is weird. I was not expecting, so honestly. Quickly. Like it's actually crazy because the last time I saw you was maybe like a year and three months ago. And now here you are with three, three million. million followers. Yeah. Not even that, guys. Like in you- a G wagon, everyone. I, was so I know. Mad at you. I'm so mad at I'm you. Sorry. Right now. I'm so mad. <laughs> it was literally like I don't know what you were driving before, but it was like, oh, he used to work at Clever. He's cool and funny and like really fucking amazing. Saw, and then yeah. literally like a week later, you had a G wagon, and I think someone was like, oh, I think that's like a prop for a video, and I was like, ah. Uh-uh. That's his car. And it was like so funny. I was like, we got to get the parking pass for Rylan. And Ash, Ash was like, he can park in the garage. I'm like, his G-Wagon won't fit in the garage. <laughs> Ash, I, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. How did you go from what you were driving to G-Wagon? I mean, like, your blow up has been insane. You have to talk about, like, the, the sponsors. How do you get your sponsors? And- well, I think it was... I mean, obviously, like, I got to learn the internet from somebody who has been doing it for so long. And I think Mm -hmm. a big portion of, like, being successful on the internet is, like, utilizing tools that work and are proven to be successful. Although, I mean, there isn't, like, one thing that works opposed to something that doesn't. But I just... I was fortunate to learn from somebody and also have promotion from somebody with the background of a job mm-hmm. on the internet. Because mm-hmm. I mean, Clever also did help me grow like my socials or and everything as for when I kind of swapped over right. to my own channel. Right. Um, but then very quickly, I I think I posted my posted my first video and in the first couple of days it got like half a million views. Wow! I was like, oh, what's going on? Because I just and I what was didn't your first video about? Uh, becoming Ariana Grande. <laughs> I was like, I talk about celebrities all the time. Like, I want to know what it would be to live as them. So I mm-hmm. made myself into Ariana Grande, then went out in public as Ariana. Yeah. I have How many followers did you have on YouTube to help They're subscribers? Get, subscribers, did you have to help <laughs> you get to half a million, or was it through Shane's promotion? Um, I think well. Through Shane's promotion, I mean, we had already also been dating for a while. Yeah, and so then, you were a household so name for Shane fans. Promoting, like, I was in a lot of Shane videos, I yeah. think, which is actually probably why when the video was uploaded, that it like kind of got into YouTube's algorithm and was pushed to people. Uh, so uh, <laughs> I think from people knowing me from Shane's videos, from Clever, me promoting it on my socials, I think Shane also promoting it, uh, kind of just did pretty well. And I, I really wasn't expecting it. I honestly did it because I needed something to feel like mm-hmm. I could do something creatively right. that wasn't just reading a teleprompter. Right. Um, and then I kind of quickly realized, oh, this might be able to be a business move for me where yeah. I can really make this my job. Um, right. 
And I, I was just intrigued by it because I, at that point, had been doing news for three years mm-hmm. and was ready to try something different. Um, so I kind of just went full force in that direction. So, I have such, sorry, I have such a huge respect for YouTubers just because I feel like people don't, maybe people on the outside, like our older generations, don't give them enough credit where you're like, you're a writer, you're a producer, you're shooting, you have editor, to come, yeah. you, you're so an editor, you have deadlines, yeah. you have to be creatively. Like you have to be so creative. You're creating content that people have never seen before. So I want to know like what your process is. Yeah, like, do like, you have a schedule that you stick to? Exactly. Or you only do it when you're feeling it. So I'm a very schedule oriented person. So when I left Clever even, it was weird for me not having to be at a specific place at a specific time. But I I, I mean that quickly ended as soon as you start really like jumping into something and becoming really busy. Um but it is a very weird job because like you guys are saying, it's every, you're every aspect of it. So the first year was nuts for me because I mean, it's just like, it, it's kind of crazy for anyone to process, I think, because there is all the pressures on you and then you overcommit to things like brand deals or business opportunities or outside opportunities. And then it's just like, oh no, I've committed too much. And now I like cannot physically do mm-hmm. all of the things mm-hmm. I've committed to. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it was a lot of learning, but it's been interesting. It's been a good ride. What do you say to people who don't know who you are and they're like, what do you do? How awkward do you oh, get? Because so I get so awkward because I don't really, we, we don't know how to describe what we do. We're like, well, we're former reality stars. At least he has like a concise, yeah. well, I'm a YouTuber. YouTuber. Yeah, I know, yeah. YouTuber. Yeah, but like other generations well, you're don't an get influencer, it. influencer. Yeah. Like. Wait, you went to your I, grandma's house, but she just knows that you're a YouTuber. Your, that would be hard to explain. It, because... My grandma's like, what's a podcast? Yeah. What's Instagram? You know? So I think my mom, like for my grandma specifically, my mom has been like, oh, these are where you can find their videos. And now yeah. she will she knows how to get there Aww. and kind of like gets how to watch it or gets what we do. So I, I think they all kind of at this point just know without me having to tell them. I think like right. my mom kind of does the telling for me or they mm-hmm. will just find it if they're following on socials or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To someone listening, how would you describe your channel? Like, what is your brand? Uh, I mean, I guess just like lifestyle esque. I think all of my what videos. What does lifestyle mean? That it's, it's, we throw this word around, around videos around but, my life. Yeah. 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 So I would say they're like vlog type videos with a purpose. So like typically there's always an overarching theme for the video, whether it be like getting a tattoo or like it's always my life, but doing. X. Okay. So have you guys ever wanted to get or try birth control, but you're scared to go through your insurance or your parents finding out? Well, now we have a sponsor called Simple Health that's about to change your life. Yeah. So Simple Health is a place where you can get birth control with a 21st century upgrade. With Simple Health, you can get your birth control prescribed online and delivered to your door for free. Whether you're already on birth control or you're looking to get back on or you want to try it out for the first time, Simple Health is going to take care of you and you don't necessarily need to do all the awkward stuff that is often involved with getting birth control like maybe your parents knowing. Simple Health is the exact same thing as a doctor's office, but online and way more convenient and comfortable. And they don't only have pills. Their doctors only prescribe trusted and vetted brands of birth control, including pills, as well as patches and rings. So you don't have to be embarrassed. If you're embarrassed going to the pharmacy and asking for your birth control, you don't have to talk to anyone. If you're already on birth control and you just want like a sweet free delivery option, this is definitely for you. So all you guys have to do is fill in your pharmacy and any insurance information, and then they'll take care of the rest. You'll never have to wait in line in a pharmacy ever again. Life-changing. And as you may or may not know, most insurance companies cover the cost of birth control, so it'll be free with most insurance plans. But if you don't have birth control, the average is $18 a month, depending on the exact type of prescription you have, and delivery is free for everyone. Love it. So the prescription is usually $20, but Simple Health is giving our listeners a free prescription. That's right, guys. F-R-E-E. All you have to do is go to simplehealth.com slash get it or enter the code get it at checkout. 
And I have to say, guys, I've liked it a lot because I have multiple prescriptions and they're always ready at the pharmacy at different times. So this saves me one trip from the from the pharmacy and it, it's really, really nice. It's just deliver right to my door. I know I'm at the age where I don't have to like lie about birth control and I've actually been on it since I was 23 because of my skin. But I always think that that's going to be an awkward conversation to have. It's just and- such a game changer because I hate waiting in line at pharmacies. I've talked about this on the podcast before. Like, I don't understand why it takes so long when the medicine's right there on the yeah. cabinet. Yeah, I don't understand that I don't at get, all. That's, that's my biggest, I don't, I don't get it. Get it. One don't more get it. thing I want to mention is that this isn't a replacement for routine evaluations or pap smears by your primary care physician or gynecologist, but it is the most convenient and affordable way to get your birth control. Yeah, gyno appointments are uncomfortable but something that we Very really necessary. can't have you avoid like we can't really just have you skip again this. Sorry. check out simple health and get a free prescription by going to simplehealth.com slash get it or just enter get it at checkout speaking of tattoo you got one and it was because of pe- shane like <laughs> was it because of shane or followers both uh so like on youtube something that po- is popular right now is that instagram controls my life for a day so you have questions for the entire day and it's the polls and they choose one or the other that's but so fun taking it mm-hmm. to the next level i had my boyfriend choose the questions for the poll and i like didn't know what the questions were until i opened them on camera mm-hmm. and one of his was get a nipple piercing or a lip tattoo yeah i've got a nipple piercing and i was so glad you want the tattoo because yeah. oh, that was the worst. Can I you mean, tell everyone what your tattoo is? Oh, it says T in the G. Well, I think it's T in G. T cup in G. <laughs> you don't know what it well, is. Well, because it, <laughs> T Why in the G cup. didn't fit. And yeah. so like it's always it's been T-G. like a long running joke like T in the G like because T <laughs> like s- like drama on YouTube oh, yeah. and then like, <laughs> like in the G wagon so I've always wanted to make a song like T in the G like a fake rap song because like obviously I have no That's business rapping but funny. I'm going to no but speaking of songs you haven't uploaded a music video in like a year so are we gonna get like a new music Ugh. video from you soon because personally those are my favorite from YouTubers because I think they're so creative they're so fun to like sing to yeah. and they're so visually like music videos are the best they're visually. also a shit ton of work yeah, yeah i think that's it i mean the it's just the production of writing a song recording a song coming up with the concept for the music filming it and like it's just a lot of work but mm-hmm. i do i have two song ideas that i do want to f- <laughs> i want the g t and the g and that i want to do uh which is uh, so ridiculous but i'll help you uh, produce it slide Ryan. into my coochie slip into my g oh <laughs> There it is. Uh, so, which is so like obnoxious and just like playing into a persona that's uh, who knows. But yeah. um, what it's for I fun. what I love most about you and Shane is that you guys are such homebodies and you guys don't leave unless you're like have uh, somewhere to be. One hundred percent. Is that amazing? You've like reached the pinnacle. <laughs> yeah, it's like you meet yeah. someone that doesn't want to leave yeah. the house just as much as you. Don't or do you have like leave. you you don't want to leave? You don't want to go partying? You've lived those days. Um, I'm definitely not a club person. Yeah. I and maybe I would go to a bar or something, but I am very happy at home, and I I like that we've kind of like built a community of people that also like to be at yes. home. So we all kind of work <laughs> out of that atmosphere. Mm-hmm. I leave the house to go to my yoga studio and to film videos, pretty mm-hmm. much, and then walk my dogs right. and stuff. But I do. We are very big homebodies. Love it. How do you come up with ideas of like what to upload, like what your video yeah, should that's be? A good Sorry, question. Um, I, so, so many, sometimes it's like the world's just working in my favor and I'm filming something and I already, um, three more ideas will come. Other times I don't know for four days and I'm panicking because I'm like, I'm never going to have a video idea again. Um, but a lot of brainstorming with my sister and Shane and we all kind of will throw ideas out or if anyone gets like, since Shane doesn't really do lifestyle videos anymore or videos surrounding his personal life, if he's always on the lookout, like, you should do this video. You need to do yeah. this video. Mm-hmm. And same with my sister. So it's all kind of, and then I have a long running list of ideas that you guys are like are Beyonce my and Jay Z. They are. It's like so amazing. Um, I have like 15,000 questions. I know, that are same. Around. I have so many. I I'm really like, should be writing them now as I think about it. I have one that pertains to me. Okay. Because of course. It's, 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 oh, sorry. <laughs> no. it's, it's such a lingering fear of like anxiety and people not following my friends. Yeah. yeah. That's a good question. What happens when this just is over? Because we all know that this industry is so fickle. I get scared all the time. I'm like, I don't want to go get an office job in three years. 
Oh, I think about that all the <laughs> Every time. waking moment. Um, no, and I was actually talking about this today. There's a lot of YouTubers that, because they're making good money, just go out and drop 15 oh, grand no, on I designer bags. As and fuck. So I did. Because of it. Yeah, I did. I bought my dream car. But yeah. other than that, I really do. And like, the internet will say that I do a lot of Gucci things, but really I only have like, like a slides. backpack yeah. and some slides, yeah, which yeah. is not crazy. Um, but I would agree in, uh, to that. I just save as much as I possibly yeah. can in mm-hmm. the off chance. But I always am like, well, my fallback would just be hosting like some kind of right. something. So that, yeah, you that's guys have a thing. skill set. No, it's like we have a skill set, which it will be helpful when those days do come. But it's kind of a weird occupation where you're going to make the majority of your money. Like you're never going to make more money in your upper 30s probably than you're making now. You might be peaking now as yeah. an upper 20. I don't know because we don't know what's to no, come. No, we don't know, you know what's to come, but at least that's the way I'm living now. Here's like the knowing weird thing. this is my professional peak. Ash, I feel like you should get. I Maybe don't, don't look at it that way. Yeah. Maybe I know. build out a what brand. I, no, we a lot totally of- are constantly, but mm-hmm. it's like one day you have to be like, when I'm 40, who the hell is going to care about me anymore? Because then we think about like, say, reality stars or. Mm-hmm. whatever's comparable like 10 years ago mm-hmm. and that was like Heidi and Spencer who here's are, the like, thing is that, they're doing fine now right I think uh, there's the Hills a, reboot yeah, yeah the Hills oh, reboot well, <laughs> well there's dreams yeah, you could dream one day for the reboot why is Misha Barton on Ooh, that that it makes no sense anyway, but I was I was gonna say I think you should dab into YouTube because my I think well we are but the thing is is I think don't know how long Instagram's going to be around. I feel like it'll mm-hmm. be around 10 years personally, but just because, oh, you know, Facebook. Think but long. I think YouTube really is the future just because we still are always going to watch television. It's just how. And YouTube's television, but Instagram mm-hmm. isn't television. No, I totally think that YouTube has been around. So I feel like there's around. a separation. You know what I'm saying? YouTube like, is definitely a staple now. It's almost like a Google. Exactly. It's, yeah. it's like you know, my home search page. engine. It's, it's like a search engine TV. for videos. YouTube yeah. is TV Has now. a TV network like approached you guys on making a reality show like on E or something? I'm sure you've been approached. She, Shane's no, been approached was, a lot, right? To uh, be on different shows? Uh, probably in the past. I mean, what's interesting is his goal initially was always to get off of YouTube. And now I think it's almost it there probably it would be very rare that there would be an offer that was more appealing that has because nowadays so i mean tv is really going down yeah. even the most popular yeah. shows are only getting eight million yeah. and saying only but a lot of like, popular youtubers like, in comparison yeah. are dead. getting more than that it's yeah. dead um so i don't know i think saying like relevant or making money is reinvention and changing with the times or like shifting to whatever is mm-hmm. the next platform of entertainment and if you're lucky enough to stay at the forefront of that hopefully we'll still all be making money what do you think the future of youtube is i honestly don't know and that's what's weird to me too is you see a lot of youtubers that were a part of the og group that are have kind of like fallen down a little bit and not to say that their channels are completely dead because they're Mm -hmm. still making probably great livings but it is scary to see the uh changes in personality it is like their reinvention that that shane's doing i'm sure a lot of people are going to follow in his footsteps and try and make more of a good series oh i love what he's doing i was saying on clever the other day like his docuseries is saving just content all around because television is so boring he really is like the anderson cooper i wouldn't say that tv it's just more fun to like count like the video no but i think like the interview docuseries it's like thanks god to netflix and like shane and like you guys for creating things that are interesting and original because movies are just being remade everything's like a spin-off or something and honestly there hasn't been a new tv show that i've been like excited about talking at an opinion standpoint because people will argue that tv has never been better but it's tv that is on not necessarily i guess i mean more digital yeah digital and i just think he's also changing the way hosts view their career Mm -hmm. you know where you could just kind of like do your own thing now you don't have to wait for like someone to like give you the job yeah which i think is very interesting i mean it's yeah i mean youtube's very specific it's weird because it's, i feel like it's very hard to get in i don't know how people i guess talent will rise to the top i don't really know how people yeah, get that's an- like, personality because i know yeah. where like once you do have an audience like that's great but then it's really your videos or like being able to keep somebody's attention or right. ideas or the way that you're producing and editing videos that will keep people i'm assuming okay you guys i have a question do you ever have an issue with online shopping where you like 
can't figure out what's going to fit and then you end up just needing to return it anyway. Yeah, that's why I don't really online shop. I know. As you're, you do. I love online. I online shop because I feel like online there are better options than in the actual I store. I agree with you, you too, I mean? but it stresses me out because of the fit. Um, but with Latote, it's going to make things better to you because you don't have to commit to buying a piece without trying it on first. However, you're still getting it online. So it's not like you're going to have a ton of clothes that you've bought, but they don't fit. Women return 40% to 70% of clothing they buy. Latote created their own universal sizing system to fit you across brands. Latote measures pieces by brand with their fit and seamstress teams to match to universal and your specific sizing. Yeah, you know how sometimes like some different brands, they fit you differently. Yeah. Like maybe you're a medium at Gap, but you are a like extra small at Urban or something like that. Mm-hmm. They know all the brand They're, size is how it's going to fit yeah. to you. Exactly. So rent pieces that fit, send them back when you're done, and then repeat it. With Latote, you guys can rent unlimited fashion. Just wear a return and discover fashion that fits you better. It'll take the stress out of getting dressed. Go to Latote.com. That's L-E-T-O-T-E.com to get started. All you guys have to do is enter our promo code GETIT, G-E-T-I-T, at checkout, and you'll get 20% off your first month. Again, that's Latote.com, and enter our code GETIT for 20% off. All right, back to the podcast. What videos for you do the best? I think videos that I'm really passionate about. I would say I like pretty much every video I've uploaded. Like I'm proud of every video that I've uploaded. But for video, sometimes it is like I haven't uploaded in a minute. I have to film a video. Mm -hmm. What am I going to film? But I think like for me, like when I wore Jeffree Star's clothes for a week, that was such a fun adventure for me. And every process of like getting the clothes, wearing the clothes, being with him, editing the video was fun. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think whenever I am like genuinely excited to film something is when I think it's the most fun. Does Andrew edit your videos as well? Oh, no, Andrew is Shane's editor. Oh, okay. But you edit your own. So that makes me feel like, okay. So you do have editors. Oh, we try. I mean, it gets freed up a little bit because I almost am stressed. How many hours are put into making one YouTube video? This is like, this is a life. So many. This is a life commitment. I would say on a weekly basis, it's probably a day of actually thinking of, okay, what is the video? What do I need for the video? Do I need to like, uh, if there's a store involved, do I need to figure out how I'm going to book the store? Whatever. Mm -hmm. So like pre-producing, then you spend a day or two or three filming the video and then a light video, I would say two full days of editing, but I normally spend probably four work wow. days Damn. editing. Do you have um, like a camera guy? I know. Does Shane, Shane has a camera guy? Yeah. Do you? A camera guy, and it's Andrew, yeah. Andrew does. Um, it. And yeah. then, I mean, but th- I mean, Shane's equally editing, if not, I mean, mm-hmm. it's very strenuous all around, but he does have right. a, Andrew does film everything. Um, I've, I do. I found a guy that I do work with as, as far as like a cameraman, and he does do a rough cut for my edits now. But it took me a year and a half to, to find, find someone, someone good that shoots the way you want them to shoot, yeah. like natural. Because I I tested out through three or four different editors. Oh. Like I'll just give them the raw footage to an old video mm-hmm. and be like, here, oh, that's and, a good idea to and test people, test them out. But it's really hard to find somebody that knows how to. Comedic editing is all about the pacing yeah. and it's know like about stopping, YouTube zooming and, in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because, like, if you go to film school uh, you, and you're an editor, you learn how to edit TV or movies. Or uh, YouTube is a very specific beast, and not only that, you have to really get the person that you're editing for. Right, you have to know that. What can, can we talk about the payoff now? If you're willing to, yeah. what is like the most you've gotten from a sponsored video? First, like, how much money can we make here? I think my old school mentality was that you make money off YouTube through the amount of views that you get and YouTube ads. But apparently, Lauren tells me, this is not how you get the majority of your money these days. Right. Um, Okay, so, well, people make money for every video from AdSense, which is Google placing Mm -hmm. ads before your videos. And for a million views, you could make... Like, I could get a million views five times, and the amount of money I make will always be very, very different. And it's because... it depends on what ads are placed before your oh. channel. Like, are you getting a Subway ad or are you getting a no-name brand that people right. don't know about? Is it 15-second ads? Is it five-second ads? Is it... And then it's like how many ads are actually... Because not every time you click a YouTube video is there an ad. Right. right. So, so how it's how many monetized work? playbacks. And then 
if you're not brand friendly, you don't get as good of ads. Mm-hmm. If you swear a lot, you don't get as good of ads. Mm-hmm. So it really like di- differs for everyone on how much money you make. But then brand deals is also a very big way that people make money. So if you're getting integration into the video, <clears throat> so if you say yeah. fuck, you don't. Is that bad? Or yeah. So yeah. what I've been told, um, you get demonetized, from a, right? For certain, yeah. Words. Like my my lip tattoo video got demonetized Blame. because there's <laughs> there was a needle like a close-up version of a needle with a little bit of, and there was a little bit of blood shown. Huh. So I got demonetized, which yeah. I was so angry That's about. So, so dumb. your AdSense is no longer there? Yeah. Or you like your sponsor You can't out. make money No, so video. my sponsor doesn't pull out, but yeah. what's, fr- and I don't even necessarily care about like the YouTube AdSense, like if for one video. Mm-hmm. But what is upsetting is as soon as you're demonetized, they stop pushing out your video. That's so like video? you get taken off of like recently uploaded and recommended, which is where a lot of people find everyone's video. Yeah. So if you get demonetized, you get like pushed out of their algorithm. That is so lame. All the videos I find are recommended. It's what pops up right next or right to the right. I'm like, oh, let me watch this. Yeah. Yeah. So like if it's demonetized, like 70% of the time they're taken out of that feed. Is that the first video you've done that's demonetized? Uh, no, I actually had a video removed by YouTube. When I first was starting out, I tried like a male package enhancer just for fun. Like, I was testing products <laughs> and there's this incredible. like cup that has the shape of a penis, but it's like a massive penis. So you <laughs> put it in your okay. jeans That's and it was okay, just man. to like walk around at, for the there's day wearing There's crazier stuff on YouTube than that. Yeah. 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 And they actually like, deleted the video, yeah. which I was so upset about. Wait, about, can like, we get back to the, um, to the most you've ever made on a video then? If you feel comfortable answering, I, exactly yeah, I don't know if I'm going to go into number. A lot of people <laughs> have gotten averages. a lot of hot water, um, yeah. but I, I, I'm not definitely not going to say a number just because okay. I don't want that floating around the internet. But I mean, if you're garnering a good amount of views, people are making like very decent money on mm-hmm. YouTube, like Why? millionaires. Yeah. Um, I mean, I like not for a video, no, right, right, right. But definitely, people are they're like top creators are definitely making, making over millions, yeah, yeah, millions a year. I mean, if yeah. you could watch, I mean, you get a lot of information from Jeffrey Star's video because, but he also does the cosmetics, but mm-hmm. he also tells how much he gets. Well, right. yeah, he's, but Jeffrey's has a cosmetics, line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That the money that he was revealing that he made was specifically through the cosmetics. Yeah. But I think even recently, in like, the, oh, there's a lot of like beauty community like brand deal leakage stuff mm-hmm. that was, mm-hmm. but oh, I don't who knows. Yeah. Go. Um, okay, so why would you get in hot water for revealing those numbers? I understand the privacy aspect, but like, is there something where people like come after you and like you shouldn't be making that much money for doing what you do? Like that pisses me off. Um, I mean, whether the amounts like not huge or huge i just think it's not something that like because right now i think it's trendy for you like your youtube's youtubers audiences to like get behind them being like oh they got a sponsor like they're making Mm -hmm. money which is great because a lot of times like the youtube adsense isn't there because so many things have happened in the past year that makes it harder to make money per video from actual google um so they get behind it but it's just this thing of where even for me i think like every six months they're like the audience shifts and gets so mad at me about something (laughs) and i think it's because when you're posting regularly like if you're on this trajectory of good, right. they like want you to do good, but as soon as you do too good, it's like, wait, they're doing too good. Is somebody what? like somebody has to, and I think it's just like the way the world works. I'm not saying yeah. it's like specifically mm-hmm. how everything happens all the time. Just how people think. But I just think like sometimes people think like, oh, that's too good. You guys, you know that this is one of my favorite times of year. Woo! Why? Well, because it's fab and it's fit. And it's fun, and it comes to my door, and it happens four times a year, and it's so much fun. Fabbit Fun is a seasonal subscription box that, like I said, is delivered four times a year, and it's not sample products. They're full size fashion, beauty, home, fitness, and wellness products for just forty nine ninety nine a box, and the value is always over two hundred dollars. They say two hundred dollars for us to, you know, uh, say as a base point, but honestly, over the past couple years, it's been worth way over two hundred dollars. And with our code, you can get your fall FabFitFun editors box for only thirty nine ninety nine. But you have to enter our promo code, which is get it G E T I T. You may be wondering, okay, what kind of full size products am I gonna get? Well, there's this 
enzyme peel, which makes your skin so glowy, so fresh, plump, and smooth. I loved this. And then there's a detox bath. Lauren loves the detox bath because she actually takes baths all the time. Bad person. Yeah. So you kind of you kind of like get all the shit out of your system with the detox bath soak. I love that. The value of this specific box is over two hundred and seventy five dollars, like I mentioned. And you're gonna get it today for only thirty nine ninety nine with our code, which is get it. So they have this new thing online where you can pick and choose what's in your box. So you got choices here with your FabFitFun box, which is a, it's kind of a new feature of theirs. Which I love because I love picking my own stuff. Uh, but I also like being surprised too. So yeah, you know, I love a the fact it's a mix of both. Yeah, you're going to be the option. And you're gonna pick. That's the best part. Okay, so you guys, don't forget, the boxes always sell out. It's not one of those companies that just says tell them that we sell out. No, they actually sell out crazy fast. It's always in limited supply. So use the code get it to get $10 off your first box. Go to fabfitfun.com to sign up and get started with a box that's going to make your life just feel very well lived. And and it makes it easier. Sorry, because I was just traveling. And can I just say that everything I brought in my carry-on was basically from my FabFitFun box. Like the Grown Alchemist Primer is amazing. The Free People Sleeping Mask. I use the Free People Sleeping Mask on planes too. Because it's like, it's also like heavy, you know, so it like really makes your eyelids close. It's the best. uh, It's the best one. It's the best. Everything it's, in it's there. The, the makeup I'm brushes. At. I'm telling you guys. FabFitFun.com. Use the code GET IT, G E T I T, to get $10 off your first box. We love you guys so much. Let's get back to the show. Um, how do you deal with like comments? Because I feel like, as someone who works at Clever, right? I was a host. And being a host on a digital platform, I think, is a lot harder mentally than being a host on television because you're constantly seeing what people think about you right under the video. Right. Um, and I feel like that can have such a terrible effect on your mental stability yeah the first time that there is a real fallout for me as like a person like people attacking me as whoever i am uh really hurt me like i was so upset that everyone thought i was this specific type of way and it was because in youtube obviously you're yourself but you do i mean you're putting on some type of show like you're it's Everything anyone puts on YouTube is for entertainment. So, like, yes, it's following somebody's real life, but it's also heightened in certain ways for entertainment. And I got pit pocketed in this like bougie, like, I bought a G Wagon and then I was like buying Gucci because I did like testing Gucci versus Walmart for a week. And then Amazing. in like Shane's videos, they're all such a different type of person than me. So I would always take this like, oh, we have to have first class. We have to like be this bougie princess. And I think it got to a point where people were just, he's too spoiled. He's too privileged. He's too this. And then there was just this whole like everyone jumped on the bandwagon of thinking I was too. You explained it really well though in a video. Like Morgan has her thing, Gary has his thing. And you, that's your thing. You're, you're, you're funny bougie. You know, you're not truly bougie. It's like when everyone came after me for saying, I hate TJ Maxx. Did they? Oh my god! On this podcast, what's well, their beef? I, I TJ Maxx. I hate any Max Sinista. I'm a Max Sinista. I hate Nas. Because Nas won't go in there because she has like a childhood memory of like having to shop there. It's just a lot of anxiety. It's the same thing when I walk into Joanne Fabrics. I'm like, where do I? But start? Joanne Fabrics is where you're buying fi- fabric. Not yeah, like Joanne's clothes. is stressful. I feel your it's your just hatred towards you have to Joanne's. Sift through it, and it's like no, and it's all from last season, and I don't like <laughs> it. Sifting's my favorite. And the lighting is so bad in there. Unless I'm buying like a phone charger because I, I don't want to go to Apple. Apple, the basic right. and it'll break in a day. Going. No, like I'm you might as well go to Apple, dude. <laughs> no, yeah, I don't TJ like TJ Maxx for, for clothes, but for home goods, I don't understand why you wouldn't try it for oh. home goods. I love home goods. No, as in for TJ Maxx oh. for home goods. They're the same company. They're the same they're, they're, company. They have the same oh. home goods. But then go to home goods. <laughs> it's some of them are really far away, and like the TJ Maxx is right around the corner. <sighs> I don't like it there. Some of this stuff might be from TJ Maxx. It's all Your apartment's very totally cute, is. by the way. Thank, Thank you. you. And we put enough effort into it. They're also living like way too much in the future. It's like you walk in into September and the Santa Clauses are already out. And it's like, just pump the brakes, TJ. You know? <laughs> Like, um, we'll get no, there. No, I don't know, Ness. You're cute to hate for all your TJ Maxx. No, anyways, your hate is sure. okay, I, got, I, I get hate from this message board, from our I don't get it message board, because now I'm too happy. Because beforehand, we were talking always for a year, over a year. It's a it great topic to me bring up. talking about how am I going to find someone? When am I going to find someone? It was just 
just Naz and I always just whining over being sad right. and single. That's why it's called I Don't Get It, because we're like, how do people get boyfriends? Yeah. That's why we started Oh, my god. Because I've never had a boyfriend. Wait, and still? Did I. Still, I've never how had How old one. are you? 28. I'm, and why do you think that is? Do you think you're too busy chasing like I think career aspirations? Everyone always says that. And I don't think it's like one thing. I think I grew up in South Florida and, you know, I was like in a sorority and I was like living that college life and the caliber of men down there aren't, they aren't like right. looking to settle down. And then I moved to LA. Which is the same. Nobody's really. Right. Yeah. And then Tinder like just started when I moved to LA and I was like serial dating, but was just meeting guys that didn't want to commit. And then I worked on Bachelor and was traveling for two years. And now right. I'm back and I'm 28 and I'm trying to be a host. But you're. Still got literally an hour for a date, maybe. I have you an know? hour yeah. for a date, but and why would you want to go on a date in that hour? And I love Ugh. staying in, just like I mean, they yeah. they introduced me to the couch before yeah. I, <laughs> before yeah. I met them. I was like at One Oak, you know, just yeah, really. like almost getting shot at. But now isn't yeah. it so much better to be on the couch it's watching the best, from afar? But I'm like, how am I going to meet someone? It's really I'm like, how am I going to meet someone? Got to keep swiping. Yeah, but also meeting somebody at One Oak's not happening. No, no. Like, no. Not, totally. not a substantial I relationship. Say, never feel guilty about staying home because no, you weren't totally. going to meet someone if you were to quote go out. You yeah. know, if That's you were true. to go on a Bumble date, that is one thing. But if you were to like go to a club, your odds are pretty rare. You're going to have a deep conversation. No, guys, I know this. This is like you know my former twenty. Now I'm just hoping my Postmates guy is like you that know, is so hottie. funny yeah, yeah well, it fucking sucks uh, but yeah so it's so crazy we had the nicest I had the nicest comments on this board when it was when you're about to be revealed that right. the, that Jerry and I were dating like they were speculating all the time and it was so fun to read everybody so excited two two months of happiness and then people are like I don't like Ashley see anymore. you're too happy yeah too happy and that's what I mean this by is such like, an interesting concept and you brought it, it up. feels like internet culture in a weird way they want you to be happy but they don't want you to be too happy and that's not everyone but once one person starts something negative that like a few more people yeah. see it just becomes it's fun like, oh, yeah, to you're jump right. on that is annoying mm-hmm. and yeah. they're like I'm, I'm subscribing i need i miss sad ashley it's yeah. so rude it's so w- weird and bizarre to me like yeah. why would you not be happy what do you think the demographic it's a relatability is relatability thing because people aren't in like there's only stages of your life where you are so happy, you know? And then it goes in ebb and flow. So I don't think that the majority of people can relate to somebody who's just having a great time in their but life. That, do you guys, do you, all three of you guys think that's like an age thing? Do, you, do we all think this is a younger thing or you think this is all across the board? I think it's all across the board. Yeah. Because I'm not one to like comment. Like I'm the type of person that watches a video that won't comment. And I don't know if that's because I was I've born never met a hater that's I've never met a hater that's above me. Who the fuck just said that? Rihanna or something. No, but Lauren, I like, mean, that's like, what it is. Lauren, you and I think things, right? Like, we'll watch TV and we'll be like, that girl's outfit's trash. Yeah. We would never comment that on a girl's photo. Yeah, so, we would my never question say it. is, is this, is that a younger thing to like make it known and comment yeah. and make someone feel it's bad? It's accessibility to spread hate. What do you guys yeah. think? Because oh, I would never spread the hate. I would just it say would take, it by myself in my room. Yeah, it would take a lot for me to seek out somebody's or scroll down and actually leave something. They would really have to do something. Right. That like, I feel saying. weird. Like, like under Bella Hadid's picture being like yes like, I don't know her why is she reading this comment I would never even spread the love yeah. I'm like you're not reading this I've only commented like huh. a couple times when the outfit is so jaw dropping <laughs> yeah, like, like, I'm would, like Bella needs to know yeah. what yeah. I think I know, right? this is the greatest outfit you, you know which one I'm talking yeah, about yeah, I, do, yeah, right. yeah. Okay. I love when I'm on <laughs> Olivia Culpo's Instagram and I see friends of mine being like you look so great in this outfit yeah. I'm like great they feel the same way I do so yeah. passionate <laughs> that they had to say something exactly I'm just like who are these people that like say these things but here's the other thing take the opposite side of that you're so lucky that they're invested enough to yeah, go yeah. and re- and put a comment even if they're not vibing with you at the moment That's because so true. like in your next ebb or whatever <laughs> they might be like oh yeah i'm vibing with her again even though i wasn't relating to her <laughs> for true. a second such a fucked up cycle so it's crazy um do we think there's gonna be a logan paul video no no really it's a hard no yeah, I mean, I think he uh, did. There was a point where it was like offered, like it was accessible, mm-hmm. but it was in the middle of the. And I mean, I can never say never. Who knows? Maybe something will shift and that will be the entire focus of the next docuseries. But specifically for the last one, it w- was a no. You, Just, ne- you didn't meet Jake in this series, did you? Oh, no, he came yeah, over. He came yeah, over. he did. Yeah. And yeah. you liked him. 
Yeah, I actually really liked him. He was very, and I loved Erica. Yeah, like I, I, I really see loved you. Erica. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he was very, and Shane said when they went to Jake's house, he was in the top five polite YouTubers in wow. terms of making sure everyone had water, making yeah, sure the whole right. like crew was okay, yeah. and being very accommodating. So I think the Jake Paul thing is he's a 21 year old that's yeah. mega rich, mega famous, and being 21. Yeah. And yeah, he's, he's made some bad decisions. Yeah. First of all, like, for wow. those listening that don't watch YouTube, we're talking about Shane's docuseries, The Mind of Jake I'll Paul. I'll post it which on is, the group. Yeah, everyone. we'll post the link. I'm sure a lot of you have seen it. But yeah, I agree. I, I would always defend just and Bieber when everyone was like, Me why too. is he TPing the house? Yeah. Why is he driving through Calabasas like, what the fuck at night? What doing? I go, he has a Maserati. What else is a kid going to do? But also, did you guys see him eating a burrito sideways today? I can't defend <laughs> him for that. <laughs> that that is bizarre. That is weird. That that is weird. Wait, so where weird. was he? What? Oh my God, to show you this picture. Is it was spotted burrito? in New York. You know just what? Eating a Be, he probably doesn't like the the ends, the bready ends. I love the bready ends. So he probably just wanted to get Ryland. to the good stuff. Whoa. I mean, that's like, he's really just going in on it. (laughs) But that's the worst way to eat it because then the ends fall. Hey, maybe he has it right and we all have it wrong. You may be right. Anyway, we're looking the rice that we Don't talk until you try it. It's just because Jake's young. But I'd love to know how can you, if you are willing, go into like how the whole docuseries thing came about? Uh, Yeah, it was TanaCon. Um, Right. We had, so Shane never goes to conventions for so many different reasons. And uh, Tana, Tana Mojo, Mojo who's, who's a YouTuber, uh, yeah, a popular YouTuber. She decided to put on a convention that just went really wrong. She, they overbooked the venue by four thousand people, and mm-hmm. all four thousand of those people were waiting outside for six or seven hours in hopes of getting in. But there were no food trucks, no water, no nothing. It was hot. They were all getting sunburned. It was nuts. The fire marshals came. They played into it after it was already happening because I think that's what they thought was good. And really, I mean, I don't think Shane would ever say this. And but I, from my perspective, I genuinely do believe he promoted it so hard. And because Shane doesn't do conventions, seventy percent of those people that went were because Shane kept mm-hmm. saying, "Like, oh, I'm going to be at this right. place." We had a bunch of panels there. We were talking. We had meet and greets there. Right. And not that his squad is the draw, but Shane, I think, was a large draw of it. If you mm-hmm. look at a lot of the people that were waiting outside getting sunburnt and stuff, they were all wearing his merch. Mm-hmm. Um, so he took it very personally in the fact that all of these kids... Uh, and the people that we met, their parents had spent all this money flying them people out, putting them in hotels. traveling just to go. Cool. And not paying money to go to VidCon to go to TanaCon because yeah. these conventions are expensive. You can afford yeah. one or the other, if any at all. Quick little background. So VidCon is a big convention with all YouTubers and Tana was not invited to VidCon, so decided to put she on She wasn't a creator convention. A featured VidCon. creator. She wasn't yeah. a feature creator, exactly. Yeah. So when that all went south, like he just could not process it. And so th- the next day, these girls came and knocked on our door, which was strange. But wow. they're like, we didn't get to meet you. And so people know where you guys are. those live? the girls that he did it's the interview nightmare. with? That's a part of the reason. Those the same chicks? Yeah. And oh, okay. um, wait, Ryland, people mm-hmm. knock on your door like every day. That's so intrusive. Well, yeah. he. It, somebody got mad at Shane once. Then when one person finds the address, then it was leaked. And now you Google like oh, the address and it's horrifying. out there. But I, I mean, we're like moving in like five seconds. So it's... It so haha, ha, guys problem, can't knock on their door anymore. The problem will be solved. Um, team 10 house. Yeah, we're getting out of our current rat situation. Oh my God, the team 10 house is right near... It was miserable. It was so close, right? When, no, when he lived here in Beverly Grove. It, it was right on in West Hollywood, It was right, right like down the street Crazy. from me. Yeah. So anyways, this docuseries started from TanaCon, and then he was just interested in more people, and then it's escalated from there. Did you guys have any idea how big this docuseries is going to be? No. I mean, I think it kind of took over the internet in an unexpected way. I it, And what was interesting about it was it was garnering outside attention. I think people that don't watch YouTube watch the TanaCon exactly. series, which is interesting because the subject was a YouTuber. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think just the madness that it was was just such a compelling story. And then Shane's mm-hmm. a great storyteller and an amazing editor. Yeah, Naz was, was in one of those vi- TanaCon oh videos. Oh, my God. It was, oh, yeah. it was like the coolest day of my life. We I covered- was like, maybe you'll be in the second one. Maybe you'll be in the third I one. I know. They kept coming out. And, you know, yeah. Lever is often featured in it. And that's what in. we cover every day. And I was like, oh, my God. I fucking made it. Yeah. Like, Shane. 
video. Awesome. This is like the greatest day of my life. Do you have any more questions? I Lauren? have questions, I like... but I don't know if they're gonna like ever, ever, everyone, all the listeners Who are gonna cares? be interested. Okay, Ryland's so here. I started watching because of the Spooky Boys. Right. And so um, true spooky and boys. Yes. I want to know spooky boys. Okay, so I, I typed into YouTube. I go um, Queen Mary haunted because I wanted to stay there. And then the video popped up. I was like, okay, I wonder if they found anything, but I didn't know who you guys were. The Queen Mary's like, oh, a that's ship. the video that, that you found. Wow. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, so let's see if it's haunted. And I watched the whole video. I'm like, these people are fucking hilarious. So then I just kept watching the next one, the next one, the next one, even when they weren't in the spooky boys. But then I fell in love with Drew Monson. And I just want to know is Drew Monson actually okay? Yeah, he's fine. I <laughs> he's doing good. He's and doesn't have a presence currently on yeah. the internet. We still see him frequently. Not oh, okay, not good. a ton, but he's good. I think he's just like working out his own life before mm-hmm. he decides I think where he's going to go. I think the internet is very toxic in general. For sure. Um so I think he's just figuring out what will be next. Drew Monson has like a history of like depression and mm-hmm. he he makes his videos about like, how depressed he is, but in a kind of a funny way. But like, I'll Aww. watch those and I'll like cry with him. He's Aww. like a comedic Aww. genius. He, yeah, really he really is so captivating and has such a unique He's personality. Amazing, so funny. Um, do you have more? Because I have. I, I can talk about. Drew I have for a, a nice. I have a game I like to play with him at the very okay. end okay. called so Inside the Actor Studio with yeah. Ryland. <laughs> so Amazing. <hot. laughs> All right, let me ask a couple more. Then, okay. what are the best and worst parts about being a YouTuber? Um, the best is, I, well, I remind myself that I have the best job literally all the time because you get to, there's no one telling you no as well. Like even when my previous jobs, there's somebody else kind of dictating when, when you're doing something, when, what you're doing, and then it's not a full like creative experience. So I love that I can think of an idea that excites me and see that through all the way to the end. And then miraculously somebody else wants to watch it and that gets to be my job. So I think the coolest part is then also being able to like travel places and be like, Oh, but I'm working. Right. So, so cool. it's cool. And the worst part? Um, it's really taxing and draining, and I think it's isolating. I, I'm very fortunate in that I have people around me that that's also what they do as well. So I have like a bouncing board. Mm-hmm. But I think a lot of YouTubers, to the core of them, are depressed people. I think a lot of people like start comedians. YouTube. Yeah, because wow. they weren't necessarily like thriving in real life or didn't have a lot of friends and they felt comfortable talking to their camera. Mm-hmm. So it's right. kind of like typically I would say like a lot of people on YouTube, it was, they started this and then it kind of took off for them and it's isolating because you work by yourself. Do you feel, sorry, that's a scary, that's a scary, um, predisposition to have when you're about to expose yourself to so many people on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. And then when things, it's, I mean, it is toxic there because when something goes wrong, it really goes wrong. I mean, you can, you you see all the time, like people are out to ruin people's careers and in the, especially in the YouTube beauty community, all the stuff that happened this year. But in the same token, do you feel like, and Rylan personally, like when I met you, I didn't know you were gay. Do you feel like YouTube kind of in the past couple of years has helped you find yourself and your voice and like who you are? Um, so a lot, and that is, I do see a lot of like, Ryland's so confident. And I think that's because I am comfortable being myself, but I think that was something that I had previously. Cause like you saying, like, even though you worked in like the same arena as me being like, I didn't necessarily know you were gay. Yeah. It's cause I've never like made gay, like a personality trait necessarily. And I'm not like, there's so many people that like gay is their brand. And that was just never be, and I like, to each is their own, yeah. but like that's just not ever who I'll be. But mm-hmm. uh, um, what was the initial question? Well, because oh, it's feel- helped me. It's yeah, because be- I feel like your voice. It so God. Yeah, I think I've definitely become more and more and more comfortable. Yeah. And like my sister will say, like you're gayer literally every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's why I asked. I didn't want to say that line, but I yeah. feel like I see more of it now, and it's really cool because I'm like, is he? He's living his true self now, it almost feels like, you know? Yeah, and I think, yeah, yeah, I would say so. Yeah. What's your Inside the Actor's Studio? Wait, oh, I already wrote them down, but do you have any more? Wait, this, is gonna so, be our, oh. this is not going to be our do wrap you up. Feel, do you feel like YouTube ever gets in the way of your relationship? And do you ever want to just stop one day or like for a month and take a mental break? Uh, yeah, 100%. It's, uh, I think because luckily Shane and I have a very healthy relationship, but 
being on a platform where you expose a lot of your life, it does get confusing. And more so than that, like work out like Shane, this la- like Jake Paul, like goodbye for a month because he lit- mm-hmm. there's eight part mm-hmm. docu series right. that was I mean he was staying up all night every night sleeping like four hours a night getting those things up. Um, so I think it just is very important to like, if you want to be in a relationship, maintain like, okay, but we also have a date night at this point and like really like make sure because like running essentially you're a business by yourself is a Mm -hmm. full, full full-time job. Yeah. It's like pure self-motivation for him to actually get himself up and do that. Yeah. So my last question, so Ashley can play your game is what (laughs) advice do you have to people listening right now that want to be YouTubers? Cause I feel like back in the day when we were in school, people were like, I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a TV host. And now a lot of people in high school are like, I want to be a YouTuber. So I feel like we have to give people that answer from you. I would say like a lot of people say in entertainment, start it because it's something you're excited about rather than I want to be a millionaire or like be rich or be famous or like get validation from outside people. I think it's, you're going to have to like creating something. So I think as long as you're telling a story in your unique voice and excited, like genuinely passionate about it, eventually I think it will probably take off. Amazing. Those are all the questions I had. All right, let's play Inside the Actors yeah, studio. studio with Rylan. Host, <laughs> your host, Ashley Akinetti. All right. All right. Ryland, what was the scariest day of your life? <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny. Oh, no. Um, wow. I, I actually don't have, like, a specific day coming to mind, which seems weird. I don't know. If you don't have one. Do you one, have a scary like, day? Yeah. No, I think it's a <laughs> nice. Like, I think it's a nice way of not asking what the scariest day, the saddest day of your life is, uh, because you can avoid that, not tell that story. But if you had story. a scary, like I, I don't, I didn't, I can't. They say that I have, the which is probably day. why I'm asking somebody else I don't because think, I don't have. Yeah, I don't, yeah. Do, any, do either of you? I mean, maybe being ghosted, thinking I was being ghosted, was a scary day. Like dooming. Yeah, dooming. I had sad, a dooming day. I definitely misery. had one of the worst yeah. dooming days. I think for me, it was getting my fibroid surgery because I'd never gotten surgery before. And you know how you just think worst case scenario. Oh, yeah. I'm like, what if I don't wake up? I guess oh, that yeah, is scary, I, yeah, that's so scary. funny. Yeah. Our dad's an anesthesiologist, so and I don't yet, worry. I don't worry no, about surgery at all. No, and yet the scariest thing about surgery to me is not waking up from it. That's yeah. weird, and that's uh-huh. funny that you don't feel that way, Lauren, because my dad was a pilot, so I've never been scared on a plane. I feel really? so comfortable on planes. Hmm. Planes are like Disney World to me. That, I'm see, so excited the whole time. Not you. No, Shane and I, I... Well, Shane has this crazy fear of planes, and now it's like come down onto me. He's Isn't so that the worst when secondhand, afraid. secondhand yeah. afraidness that happens I never with Ashley? Afraid. But for back to yeah. the anesthesia, th- yeah. Yeah. whatever you call it. Do you... <laughs> I've heard that you actually do feel everything, but it's like erased. You, is that true? No, I that's don't think definitely so. not true. That just okay. okay now I just because look at no. no. yeah, It's like this weird thing where like people are actually awake the whole time. I if mean, you start no. YouTubing videos, it's nuts. Right, like, it's no. not. Make it I not. Terrible. It can't be possible. Like I never think You're about like the... how are you getting cut open and you don't feel. Ah, I don't know. No, the <laughs> scariest thing about it is that you are in the closest level to sleep that is death, basically because like they have to like kind of they have to basically like start your stop your heart and monitor it like yeah. they yeah, so are fucking charge up your heart so you're relying you're breathing, on them you're to breathing. give you enough that you can't feel it but yeah. if they go too far you're dead that's what i mean yeah. if you go too far that's like, the scary dead thing. sucks but yeah. being alive while the surgery is happening and knowing is like <laughs> well, you know level. that it's like one in every like fifty thousand surgeries the person apparently feels it the entire uh, time but uh, like, that's like, i think it's like a malfunction it's like a malfunction yeah, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's, it's like weight ratio, you know, how much you this get. This is like second We should have dad on to explain now. it, but... Well, that would be a great that idea. That actually is that a really good... Should come I on would and listen to that, that episode yeah. and like so fast. Yeah. I'm already clicking. Okay, cool. Okay. okay. We'll get done. Ryland's next Molly video. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're going to go in there Eddie. and find out if we die or not. <gasps> click the next video to That's find out if really we live. That's a really easy podcast topic for dad to just come on and talk about his profession. No, we talk about I don't get it. We do professions all the time. I know, but I'm saying it's such an easy one to just call dad. Oh, yeah. Why haven't we done that? I don't know. Where is his... Like, where does he live? Northern Virginia. Yeah. 
I don't get it. Anesthesia. Yeah. Who really gets that? No, no one. one. Gets it. No one. <laughs> What's the night? This is fun. Okay. Um, I was going to ask, what is your favorite day of your life? Oh, the best day. Oh, wow. <laughs> favorite day of my life. Lauren, you're so annoying. You look so good right now. Ew. <laughs> I've looked really good the past like three days and I need to let my face breathe because I'm having a lot of acne problems. Uh, I don't see it. What's weird is I don't... It, uh, do any of you guys have a specifics popping up They're for any of these? They're all in like eighth grade, which is so depressing. Really? really? <laughs> yeah. There are days that if I were to look back and relive them now, I wouldn't consider them my favorite day. Of I my have life. like best moments. I don't know if I would say like best days, but it's like you know like the monumental moments and like yeah, the, the like, day you fell in love with someone or the day you got a job you really wanted. Yeah, right. I th- yeah, like and for me, like getting my car was a yeah. very big thing for me because not only was it the car, it was like oh, I'm at a place in my life that I've worked my entire life for that I can like actually justify doing this. So mm-hmm. it was like a, I would start Whoa. crying. You're like I worked so hard and I got this like on my own. Yeah, that's crazy. Isn't it weird that the day that Jared talked to me out on the water mm-hmm. where he like confessed his feelings? I think about way before I think about the day we get engaged. That's adorable. That is cute. Right? I think about that, that was the moment. Yeah, yeah you that's know? more of like the m- m- turning point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, the best. Okay, oh, wow. they get a little bit easier now. <laughs> <laughs> Ryland, what's your favorite food? Oh well, we have very visceral reactions, so don't be alarmed if we like if we scream at you. Well, I only eat. From three restaurants. Oh, so. I like that. So, wait, so that means you're a psychopath, right? Lauren, you told no, me this. No, no. Yeah, Lauren told me people that only eat at three restaurants are not, psychopaths. Not what it is. Okay. Is that what it was? No, I'm definitely, I mean, th- th- one in 20 people are a sociopath. So yeah. it's like that's that. what I meant to We've say. all learned that this week. Yeah. That is a lot of people. It's very alarming. And then yeah. I was like, am I a sociopath? And then you in definitely LA, aren't. In LA, so many people are like textbook narcissists, yeah. which yeah. is equal, and not equally as scary, but almost as scary. Wow. Um, what was, oh, food. food. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what are the three restaurants? I eat at Tender Greens every day. Oh, that's yeah. Awesome. Oh, that's like all weird. I introduced right. Lauren to Tender Greens. I, tender Greens is so much better than Fresh Corn Grill. Do you get the steak? I do like Fresh Corn Grill as well, but that would that's like uh, like once a month where Tender Greens could potentially be every day. It's yeah. like an everyday meal. Do you get the do steak salmon. or the fish or the chicken? I do the happy vegan salad, but that's not because I'm specifically vegan. Okay. Oh, I've never and had I put, that. will a lot of the time put the salmon on the happy vegan salad. Cool. Okay. Um, Lauren and I get steak mashed potatoes. Steak. We, I love yeah. why, why am I not included Sorry, in Sorry, I don't know. Wait, do you get Tender Greens? Yes. Where do you think I, I don't know. I, I'm start, alone with I was the one get. who told her to get tender greens over oh. fresh corn grill and oh. she started eating it more because of me. Well Sorry. the problem with fresh corn grill is there's only one that at least that I know of. Yeah, yeah there's so like one in Santa Monica it's like or bajillion dollars. There's yeah. something so about fresh far. corn grill doesn't make me feel as good afterwards. Okay, well, so tender tender greens is definitely more like power healthy i feel like yeah um chipotle okay. and then Ugh. um yeah, we don't, we don't get chipotle. chipotle i'm like on and so i go on and off i go like six months Me on too. six yeah. months okay. off that yeah. i respect um, yeah i'll respect the break and yeah. then uh like any mexican restaurant like if i'm like dining in oh, is mexican and food. you're a taco Gross. bell fan yeah do you like because we're a big taco bell family here wait so you said no to mexican food okay, but, but then taco bell i hate before. mexican food is the food i hate the most but taco bell is like a Americanized Mexican. Right. I what don't you like about Mexican authentic food? Authentic Mexican food like literally hurts I like your it. I hate it. It's I like love the pico, American the, Mexican the corn chain. tortilla. Right. American Mexican. It's so gross. Well, no, I'm to more me. of like a flour tortilla kind. Well, yeah. So then that's not. Yeah, it's like well, like well, American Mexican restaurants. A Back corn to tortilla Wait. just with meat and salsa is not good. Disgusting. No. Do we the have corn to go back to Chipotle? No, I just want to ask. Morgan, his sister has a tattoo of Chipotle. Did she get free Chipotle for the rest of her life? So they didn't get and. Those cards actually, because Shane had one, they give like celebrity cards to like yeah. people that like frequently promo what? them on social media and it's you like get post-based. free, but they so are like, are so lucky. they're like two years. They expire. Okay. So you eat can, your heart out for two years. I mean, most of the time they'll, they'll renew them. I think if you ask, but okay. so we're all cool going to Chipotle once a day, <laughs> every day you could get a free burrito and then they do like one big catering. But if you go with people, they also just give everyone in your party no, free. What the and heck? like Ashley, the drinks and everything. That? So like you if, don't like Chipotle. I, I would like one. to feed homeless people with that then. I would literally mm. gather them up and be like, come in with me. Yeah. Oh, that's Let's nice. Let's do that. Okay. Um, bad celebrity encounter. Because we just recently had a podcast Ooh. on this topic, the entire topic. So it'd be interesting if you've had one. Oh. oh. Who was it? I mean, it's like 
uh, like old Hollywood lady. What was her name? Oh my gosh. I'm trying to think of what movie it was. It was a, uh, I don't know, but she was so rude. There was, uh, man, I mean, it doesn't matter if I can't think of her name. <laughs> Do you guys have crazy ones? Did you guys already tell yeah, all we your crazy yeah. ones? Um, we can move into who's your celebrity crush. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Hmm. Well, okay. When I was like, I mean, my whole life, I would say, I guess I could even be now, even though I'm like a gay man. <laughs> I've always been, I've always had a thing for Hillary Duff. Interesting. She's forever. gorgeous. Okay, Her, Younger forever. is the best fucking show but, ever. Do oh, you yeah. watch Younger? I, I mean, f- I like was, I just didn't, for like two years of my life, I hadn't watched TV. I'm like recently getting back in, but I have seen the first three seasons of Younger, but yeah. I think there's like what, five there's now? There's five. I've watched up until four, so I'm right. going to watch So I'm a little so behind, good. but I do love Hillary Duff. She's great. Yeah. That's the a bone good one. structure's insane. Really is. I felt like Lizzie McGuire. I just landed from Rome yesterday. And I, was like, <laughs> I was literally like, I was so annoying. I was like, don't tell Miss Ungermeyer. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, I got two more. What is your biggest insecurity? Ooh. Um, I'm. Tr- I guess my teeth, but it doesn't bother me as much anymore. So, like, my this oh, you tooth have Jared teeth. overlaps a this tooth. Well, I do have vampire teeth. I'm not yeah. upset about the vampire, but <laughs> my, my very front two teeth, like, one overlaps the other in a weird way. Mm. Um, and I used to, like, hate it so much, I was going to fix it immediately. But oddly enough, Shane has, like, made me not oh hate it. God. Because he, no, because he, like, put it in this way. I And I think I hated it so much because when I first moved out here, I got an opportunity to meet with I, like in one week i met with like the all these big hosting agents like that repped all of these people that i was like i want their careers and one of them specifically said well you're never going to get your big job until you fix your teeth <gasps> Mm, and I was like, so "What mini. a classic story!" You know? said, yeah. Yeah. And it's like something that you hear people That's talk about, but you yes, never, says, no. story. you yeah. never yeah. think that it like actually happens. But she was like so blunt and straightforward, and like I don't think she thought she was being mean, but she was just like matter of fact, like, mm-hmm. okay, well, if we're gonna get you a massive job, we got to fix your teeth. Um, but then, like, once I started YouTube, and once I met Shane, and when he was asking me about insecurities, how he put it was like, "No, that's like what." He's like, because people like to relate to people on things. And if everything about someone is Aww. not saying that I'm like a perfect looking person, but like that is like one thing that could be like super so off. True. Wow. But like if you were to fix your teeth, then that's like one less thing that's like makes you the person that you were, um, which like oddly, I don't know if he was trying to make me feel better, but it worked. Wait, and now it's like Riley, in my brain. You just brain. made me feel better because I feel like after being on camera for the past year, I don't know if you felt this way, Ashley, since you've been on camera for a long time, but I've, I hate hated looking at myself and I started changing things and I'm like this is the worst like no wonder yeah. the Kardashians have gotten so much work done if you're constantly watching yourself mm-hmm. you're like I don't like that I don't like that and you can like change it very easily with one syringe yeah and I made a lot of like a lot of uh, specifically YouTube girls like you'd be so like I meet them and then I start talking to them and they're so open and candid about the 30 surgeries they've had on their face and they and all I'm look like, the same now what? they all look the same um, so it's very interesting um, my last question is, what do you want God to say to you when you meet him at the pearly Jesus. gates? Jesus, deep. <laughs> That's what Wait, Kim what was the question? says oh, okay. at the uh, end of every oh, episode. What, what ask, do you ask, want God to say to you when you meet him at the pearly gates? Oh, that's funny. Hopefully, welcome. I hope I go. Like, I hope, <laughs> I, I hope that's where I'm going. I don't know why I wouldn't, but um, hopefully, it's just welcoming yeah. arms. You Enjoy. Know? Yeah. I think that was a good answer. This good was the wrap best podcast ever. Rylan, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. So much. So us. much. Thank you. Lauren's like, <laughs> geeky guy. Uh, Lauren, you have a special shout out to give to a girl that you met in Tennessee this week. Oh. <laughs> okay, well. Um, girl that works at the Brentwood Suites, thank you for listening. <laughs> <laughs> she was so nice. She oh, saw nice. Lauren's so nice. name. She saw her name on the reservations, and she was like, "I saw I and I was hoping it was you." And then she, oh Lauren, God, walked Lauren. in, and she goes, "It was good because I had like, you. yeah, I had like a very shitty experience at another hotel, and I was like, I shouldn't. Even, this is so dumb. Why am I? Why am I even here? Why did I stay another day?" And then she walked, she up the thing, and she was very nice to me. I feel like it's those little moments that yeah. like teach you that you are doing what you're supposed right. to be like, doing. Right? I was like, I was like. This is just like serendipity. Like I'm on the right path. Yeah. I should have come here. This is all good. I didn't tell you guys the story really quick. I like was searching for gelato everywhere. Like <laughs> the night before I was leaving Rome, I was like, I'm not fucking leaving without eating it. Were and you there- just in Rome? Yeah. I got wow. back yesterday for clever. And you're alive? Yeah. Thanks to <laughs> Xanax. Anyway, so, right? 
So anyways, I find three gelato places are closed. I go into one last one and I ask him for like the gelato and he goes, are you on DHR? And oh I was like, gosh. what? He's like, DHR oh my God. on Clever. He goes, that's how I learn English. I watch <gasps> DHR on Clever. And you guys. No like, way. Like all the gelato places. And I was there like, you this go. is just the coolest thing. No way. That is so too grateful, cool. You know? That's super yeah. cool. That's interesting. DHR, awesome. man. Rylan, I'm sure you get stopped a million times <laughs> yeah, a day. Yeah. Oh. He doesn't go anywhere with the gym and tender green, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye. This podcast is brought to you by Wave Podcast Network. Check out all of our shows, including the Brain Candy Podcast, I Don't Get It, Babes and Babies, Coffee Convos, and Let's Talk About It.